Hey guys, my name is Bruce John, and today I want to share some learnings about micro front end architecture with Angular. So, if you don't already know what MFE is, it is just a front end architecture that allows you to break up your application into smaller reusable modules. And because of its complex structure, it also forces you to improve your code quality and making your application more scalable and more maintainable. <laughs> okay, just a quick introduction about myself. Uh, I've been with Angular about eight years and I'm currently working at Cisco as a front-end engineer. So you have probably seen way too many POCs or tutorials about MFE. You are very intrigued, but you're still skeptical about how it's gonna work on your current production app. <clears throat> After converting a large-scale monolithic app into a front, uh, micro front-end architecture, I wanna show you some common issues that we found and some learnings along the way. Let's start with the easy one first. <clears throat> if you see a network error like this, Go to your network tab and then make sure your remote entry is there. Sometimes you just simply forgot to serve one of your remotes. And by the way, I'm gonna use the term remote a lot. It's just another term for app. Your entire application is composed by these remotes. Okay, sharing libraries is a key concept in MFE. In newer versions of MFE plugins, they share libraries by default. But if you choose not to share a lib, you gotta be careful with the injectables. <laughs> the injectable services in a library that is not shared will no longer be singleton, even providing in root. Like what's shown on the left, each remote will spin up its own <coughs> instances of service and making multiple API calls, and, uh, which will cause unwanted behavior. Okay, uh, make sure you're up to date with ECMAScript versions. This import.meta.url is used to identify the public path of your MFE remote. If you're, if you're seeing this arrow, that just means you're not, you are not targeting a, at least ES2020 in your compiler options. So what if you got customers just, just won't upgrade their browser? Um, yes, there is a workaround. You can still force, them to, uh, force Angular to use common JavaScript instead of ES module, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> okay, the error gets more and more complex, but the fix is still simple. The common error I can almost guarantee that you're gonna run into is this reading theta component of undefined. This will only happen in a production build, and the library is shared. What is really complaining about is you have a component exporting an Angular module here, but you did not export in ESM format. In another word, in your index.ts file. I suggest you start fixing these issues right now before even going into MFE. Okay, so you served all your remotes, but your browser is blank, and so is your console log. That's the worst error I could ever imagine. But don't panic. Go to your source tab, <clears throat> go to your source tab and check on that pause and exception checkbox. And then one of them could be stack size exceeded error here. And uh, this is caused by a circular dependency generated by a self-referential path alias. That is, when you import something from your own module, but still use the path alias. Instead of that, you should use a relative path like this. Again, this only happens if you're sharing the lib, and also you can fix this pattern before even going into MFE. Okay, so you fix all the issues I just mentioned, along with many other weird ones gonna, it's gonna happen to you. And your app is running just fine. Is your newly structured MFE application now better, faster, and stronger? Well, the answer is not yet. There are still more important, well, not more, but there are still important performance tools that doesn't work out of box with MFE, such as service worker prefetching and Angular router preload. We kept our Angular router preload by fixing the, uh, the risk condition because we want to preload some heavy remotes. Um, but we got rid of uh, service worker prefetch because it's causing more issue than it solves. Also, gone to production is not the end. It's just a start of making your application more flexible and scalable. There are a lot more to think about. How do you want to distribute your remotes? By teams or by features? Um, how, do you, um, do, how do you coordinate individual team deployments? How do you do hot fixes? How do you do rollback? All these problems can be tackled and improved later down the road. Well, thank you very much. I know five minutes isn't enough to explain all the issues I just explained. My legal name is actually Zhang Jingyin. That's the name you need to find me. <coughs> uh, that's the name you need to use if you want to find me. And feel free to come and talk to me in person at any time. Thank you very much.